Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of dynamical systems, control engineering, control theory, machine learning, optimization, robotics, etc. In this dynamics tutorial we explain how to derive the equations of motion or a model of a pendulum on a cart system that you can see over here. We use Lagrange's equations to derive the model. But before we start with derivations, let us first explain the main motivation for deriving the model of the card pendulum system. First of all, the card pendulum system is a classical nonlinear dynamical system that is often used to benchmark different linear nonlinear estimation as well as control methods. Also, it is often used in the machine learning community to benchmark different machine learning and reinforcement learning algorithms. And finally, the card pendulum system is a starting point for modeling a number of a real systems, such as self-balancing scooters, rockets, bipedal robots, human bi biomechanics, sloshing of fuel in spacecraft, etc. This particular tutorial is completely dedicated to derivation of equations of motion of the system. In my next tutorial, I will explain how to model this system in MATLAB and Simulink, as well as how to design a control algorithm that will stabilize this pendulum in its vertical position. Finally, before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. The system consists of the cart with the mass of M1 that is driven by the force F. Then we have a point mass with the mass of M2 that is rigidly attached to the rod. We ne neglect the mass of the rod. The system consisting of the point mass and the rod is called the pendulum. The pendulum can freely rotate since it is supported by a rotating support to the cart. For example, if you apply the force F to the cart, the cart will move in this direction and our pendulum will go either in this way or in this way. To illustrate this, I will show you a real experiment that I performed in my lab with one of our, my students. Here's the cart and here's the pendulum. The cart is attached to the motor by using a system of belts and pulleys. We exert an oscillatory force in the horizontal direction and we can see that by exerting this force we are able to stabilize the pendulum in the vertical direction. We place the coordinate system over here. x1 is the distance of the cart from the y-axis. Similarly, x2 is the distance of the point mass from the y-axis. The angle theta is the angle that the pendulum makes with respect to the vertical axis, and the positive direction of theta is in the counterclockwise mathematical direction, that is, in this direction y2 is the distance of the point mass from the x-axis. To model the system, we first need to select the so-called generalized coordinates. The generalized coordinates are usually selected as a set of independent coordinates or variables that uniquely define the configuration of our system. In our case, these coordinates are x1 and theta. Obviously, if we fix x1, we fix the position of the cart and if we fix theta we fix the angular position of our pendulum. Here since we don't have additional constraints x1 and theta can be seen as the degrees of freedom of our system. To derive Lagrange equations we first need to derive the expressions for the kinetic and potential energies of this system. Consequently, our first step is to derive an equation that describes the kinetic energy of the system. The kinetic energy of the system 
can be decomposed as the kinetic energy of the card and the kinetic energy of the pendulum. Since the card is moving in the horizontal direction, it is completely translating and there is no rotation and consequently the kinetic energy of the card is simply 1 over 2 times mass of the card times the magnitude of the velocity of the card squared. And if we express this energy in terms of x1, we will obtain that the energy is equal 1 over 2 times m1 times x1 dot squared. Remember that usually in control theory books as well as in the dynamics books, dots represent the first derivative. That is, x dot is the first derivative with respect to time of x. Similarly, if you see x double dot, this means that this is the second derivative of x or the first derivative of x dot. Next, let us derive the expression for the kinetic energy of the point mass. The kinetic energy of the point mass is given by this formula. That is, the kinetic energy is 1 over 2 times mass of our point mass times the magnitude of the velocity squared. The magnitude of the velocity is obviously given by this formula. And this is very important to keep in mind. The velocity vector has two components. So let's illustrate these components. Let us assume that the point mass describes this trajectory and that basically that it moves in this direction. We know that the velocity is tangent to the trajectory. So this will be V2. V2 obviously has to have Two components. There should be one component in the x direction and there should be the second component in the y direction. So this component sketched over here is v2x. This component given over here is v2y. The square value of the magnitude of the velocity is given by this formula. V2x is the first derivative of x2 and V2y is the first derivative of y2. Let's look at the graph once more. If we know x2 and if we know y2, then we completely know the velocity vector. This is because V2x is the first derivative of x2. On the other hand, v2y is the first derivative of y2. That is, v2x is x2 dot and v2y is y2 dot. Let us find the expressions for x2 and y2. x2 is obviously x1 minus this distance over here. This distance over here is obviously L times sinus theta. On the other hand, y2 is simply L cosinus theta. Let us stop over here and let us analyze these expressions. Remember what I said at the beginning of this video. The generalized coordinates are x1 and theta. And they uniquely define and determine the configuration of our system. And you can clearly see that both x2 and y2 depend on the generalized coordinates. That is, x2 and y2 can be expressed as functions of x1 and theta. And here are the formulas once more. And in order to compute the velocity vector and its components, we need to take the first derivative of these two equations. The first derivative of x2 is given over here, 
and the first derivative of y2 is given over here. Let me just briefly explain you how to compute the first derivative of x2. Let's analyze. We want to compute x2 dot. x2 dot is the first derivative of x1, and let's see what happens over here. Over here we have obviously minus L, then we take the first derivative of sinus. The first derivative of sinus is obviously cosinus of theta, and then we take the first derivative of theta with respect to time, and the first derivative of theta with respect to time is theta dot. And if we arrange and transform this expression, we obtain finally this equation. And that's the precisely the equation given over here. By substituting this equation together with this equation in the expression for the kinetic energy, we obtain this equation. Then we can simplify this expression to obtain something like this. Finally, let us write the complete kinetic energy. The complete kinetic energy is the sum of kinetic energy of the cart and kinetic energy of our point mass where the kinetic energy of the cart is given by this equation and the kinetic energy of the point mass is given by this equation and once we sum these two, these two equations we obtain the final expression for the kinetic energy. Again, stop for a second and analyze this expression. First of all, we can observe that the kinetic energy completely depends on theta and on x1 and on the derivatives of theta and x1. That is, we are able to express the kinetic energy as a function of generalized coordinates. Next, we need to find the potential energy of the system. The potential energy of the system is the potential energy of the point mass and let us see what is the potential energy. Let's go back to our graph. Let us assume that this is the zero plane for computing the potential energy and then the potential energy of the point mass is simply mg times y2. And from basic trigonometry we can figure out that this is equal to mg times L cosinus theta. And that's precisely the expression for the potential energy given over here. Next, let us define Lagrange equations. The Lagrange equations are defined by these two equations. Let us explain these equations. In these equations, L is the Lagrangian. Lagrangian is simply EK minus EP. That is, it's a difference between kinetic and potential energies of the system. Once we determine the Lagrangian, we form the Lagrangian equations. And we do that by first computing partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to the first derivative of the first generalized coordinates. That is, we compute partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to x1 dot. Then, we take the time derivative of the resulting expression and then we form the equation by doing something like this. We add the minus sign and we compute the partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to x1. And on the right-hand side, we simply place the force acting on our cart. That is, we place the external force. Similarly, we form the second Lagrange equation. The second Lagrange equation, again, by using the same principle, you take the Lagrangian, you compute the first partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to the first derivative of the second generalized coordinate, that is, with respect to theta dot, then 
we compute the time derivative of the resulting expression, then we add the minus sign, then we compute a partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to angle theta, and since nothing is acting on the point mass when it comes to external forces, I don't, we don't count gravity here as an external force, that keep that in mind, and consequently we don't have external force, and we have zero. In the case you had, for example, someone moving the pendulum or someone poking the point mass, then you will have the force over here. From the previous equations, we can obtain our Lagrangian. And again, Lagrangian is a function of theta x1, theta dot, and x1 dot. Next, we compute the partial derivatives. First, we compute this partial derivatives, derivative in order to compute the term given over here. Okay, this is not a complex expression. Then, we take the time derivative of this expression and we obtain this expression. And finally, we compute the partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to x1, and since Lagrangian does not depend on x1, we obtain zero. Then, by substituting 16 and 17 in the first equation, that is in this equation, we obtain the first equation of motion, and here it is. The second equation of motion is obtained in a similar manner. We take our Lagrangian, that is, we take our Lagrangian and we need to compute this term first. And here it is, this is the first term. Then we take the time derivative of this expression to obtain something like this. And then we take the partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to theta to obtain this expression. And finally, by substituting 20 and 21, in the second equation, we finally obtain the second equation of motion. This is the second equation. However, we can transform this equation by dividing the complete equation with m2l. And as the result, we obtain the final form. Combining these two equations, we obtain the final system of equations of motion. Let us analyze this system. What is interesting to observe is that these equations are only depending on theta and x1 as well as on the derivatives of theta and x1. That is, these equations completely depend on the generalized coordinates, and that's very important. Another interesting thing to observe is this second equation. If you're a Mars subscriber or if you follow my channel, you will find a video that I created and that explains how to derive an equation of motion of a simple pendulum that looks like this. And the equation of motion, if this is L and if this angle is theta, will look like this. L theta 2 dot minus G sinus theta is equal to zero. And that's precisely this part over here without this part over here. Now, if we add a car to our problem, that is, if you mount the pendulum to a cart or on a cart, we will see the effect of the cart. This is how the cart affects the dynamics of the pendulum, and this is a very important observation. And we can see a coupling between the dynamics of the pendulum and the dynamics of the cart. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.